Chapter 12 Philip's Main Story Just what in the underworld is going on? In short, he was under house arrest. He had a degree of freedom not afforded to being held hostage. Sorry. He had a degree of freedom not afforded to not afforded to those being held of ho being held hostage. That doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> Please come this way. I'll tell you everything. While Skeletal and I still had no idea what was going on, Philip seemed quite calm. He got the two of us to another room while JJ spoke in the same indifferent manner as always. So what you are saying is this count countess was a big fan of yours and couldn't wait for the next chapter of your novel? When you refused to provide the next chapter quickly enough for her liking, she kidnapped you. Is that it? I had no other more pressing assignment. So, yes, I told her to wait, but she did not take no for an answer. In being kept prisoner in my own house, all I could think about was escaping. I'm glad JJ came by and smoothed things out between us. What a poor excuse of a fan she is! <laughs> Trying to squeeze the next chapter out of you with her money and power! Skeletana was positive positively furious, which only made... Philip smiled awkwardly while he continued explaining how J.J. had helped him. I had J.J. act as a witness to this contract she signed, where she swore she would never bother me again when the next chapter was done. She was honest, if nothing else. She promised to gather signatures for a petition to His Highness about the novel I am writing for him as well. Philip's words reminded me of that annoying countess who kept bothering him in the library. So, it had nothing to do with his soulmate, then? Soulmate? Who would that be? Nothing. Just talking to myself, that's all. JJ happened to hear me think out loud in relief, and I scrambled to keep myself from praying. But we heard something shooting from your room! What was that all about? I was testing my latest invention, a tonic to make foods less rich. I had applied it to some pizza, but the zombie who ate it was rather... Viscerosis in his protestations that my tonic was not effective. So we worried for nothing then? Next time, keep your experiments out of other people's kitchens! <laughs> After calming down a, shad a shouting, furious Skeletano, I finally had time to take it in my surroundings. So this is what Philip's house looks like. It was sparsely decorated, yet still, it felt like a home. Some strange emotion came over me, and I stood up as I took a better look at them. I almost forgot! I have other matters to attend to. JJ stood up to leave, but not before turning to face me. Princess, I trust you shall be here for some time. I simply nodded. I then shifted my gaze toward Phil smiling which I was glad to see. I'll be down in just a bit. Please, make yourself at home until then. After he had gone to his room to finish his writing, Skeletona and, Skeletona and I both looked at each other. So, which one shall we read first? Skeletona seemed eager to start pouring through the many novels on Philip's book. Before I could answer, something caught my eye. Hmm? What's this? On top of one of the shelves was an antique locket. I wonder if this is... A 
I took the locket down to see whose picture was inside it. Inside of it. Its gold chain was a little bit tarnished and dropped around my waist, around my wrist. Wait a minute. I know I've seen this somewhere. The picture inside was of a long-haired woman who was smiling in contentment. And as I squinted to get a better look, wait, this face. Suddenly a sharp and piercing pain shot out in my head. <laughs> the pain was overwhelming, enough to make my knees grow weak, and I grabbed up a nearby wall for support. Jandy? Philip? Jandy, I promise that I shall love you, always and forever. D thank you, but, um, what would you do if I, you know, died? If I went to some terrible place in the afterlife? You certainly like your what ifs, Jandy. Aren't you going to answer? Or can't you? Wow. What is wrong with me? Why am I being so hostile? Philip just smiled, his eyes narrowing as he did. I promise you that, should you let me, I will go to the ends of the earth for you. No matter how terrible the place, I will never let you be all alone. Even in hell? Hell, high water, whatever it may be. Moments flashed before my eyes, as if they were playing in fast forward. If, if you can find the most beautiful rose in the land, then yes, I'll marry you. The most beautiful rose in this land? Why do I feel so uncomfortable all of a sudden? What I saw next was... Philip, I am so... Sorry. I saw myself, stricken by some disease. The sick me was coughing so hard I couldn't even breathe. I never got to, never told you how I really felt. Philip, I'm so sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was so weak that by then, I was so weak then that I couldn't even move my head. My vision went blurry. Tears overflowed from my eyes, streaming down my chest. Rather, if it was from the pain of my illness or just heartbreak, I couldn't know for sure. I couldn't. I couldn't even. I'm sorry. I couldn't stay until you came home. I was rapidly losing consciousness. All that remained was the bitter tang of regret, which not even days. I remember now, that's what happened. He was so honest, so earnest in his love for me, but I, I... The memories of my life weren't erased from being in an evil hell. I did it to myself because the pain of remembering them was too much to bear. You were still out there on that wild goose chase I'd sent you on. When I took my last breath, the pieces of the puzzle were finally falling into place. Philip, I'm so sorry. Everything went blurry again, and I was only transported to another memory. Listen, if... If telling someone how you really felt for them would upset them, would you still do it? <laughs> Another one of your one is Jandy. Are you trying to say that I'm upsetting you? Can't you be serious? Just tell me. Sorry, sorry. If it would make them upset, I hesitate to confess my feelings to them. But even then, I would tell them at least one. I'd still be afraid they'd reject me. But I know I would regret it if I didn't at least try. You're such a strong person, Philip. Not necessarily. There might be times where I'd chicken out. Really? Like when? Good question. I think... I think I'd stop. 
if telling them meant I'd lose them. In that situation, I'd hide my feelings for them. Even if you didn't know for sure, rather you'd lose them? Well, we're just talking about what ifs now, aren't we? Philip said jokingly, grinning as he did. Will you be serious? You're always joking around. I'm just saying that if there was if there was a chance that could happen, then I'd avoid telling them that's all. I can get over most things, but that's something even I'm too scared to try. Don't you think so, Jandy? Well, yes. I'd be really scared of that. I'm very sad it did. Good, then we agree. Now, enough what ifs. I'd really like to hear you sing, if you would. Yeah, that's right. Philip did say that back then. Huh? The fog of my memories crept away, leaving a very worried looking Philip staring down at me. Philip? Is that you? Oh, thank goodness! I'm just so glad. Philip said as he seemed to be fighting back tears. He had my cold hand in his, and I couldn't help but smile. I think I remembered everything. Philip's misty, crescent-shaped eyes suddenly snapped at him. You've got your memory back? Yes. Are you proud of me? I said teasingly, smiling as I did. Philip's answer was to hold me very tightly. So long, I'll give you all the compliments you could ever want. I should be apologizing. I really wanted to back then. For you, um, when I... It doesn't matter now. As long as you're alive. All I've ever cared about.